the Pareto Principle, often known as the 80-20 rule. Basically, it says that about 80% of the effect is usually due to about 20% of the causes. Today, we'll build a Pareto chart in Microsoft Excel 2010 that is enabled for display on a SharePoint 2010 dashboard with slice and dice capabilities. First, we have a blank worksheet, aptly named Pareto, and we will add a data source. For this exercise, we'll use an AdventureWorks Analysis Services Cube. And we will select the option for Pivot Chart and Pivot Table Report. That way, we can look at the report itself in order to manipulate the data, and we will also be able to view the chart to see the effects that our changes have. Next, we'll select the measures that we would like to visualize. We'll select Internet Order Quantity. Second, and this is important for creating a Pareto chart using this method, we will select the value Internet Order Quantity 2. Now, as you can see, it's the same number, missing the comma, but nonetheless the same number. And what it is, is as you can see here in the AdventureWorks cube, I've created a calculation that is, in fact, the measure itself. So it's actually creating duplicate data, and you'll see why that's important in a little bit. Well, how do we want to view that data? Let's look at the customer dimension. And let's add location, state, and province. Now, there's 57 state and provinces listed, which is a nice number for visualizing a Pareto chart. Additionally, we'd like to set it up for slice and dice capabilities. So let's add a date dimension. And that hierarchy can be put as a filter in the background. Let's move our chart back over and format it so that it looks nice relative to our report. Okay, now Let's look at our sort options. Let's do a descending sort by internet order quantity. And as you can see, the state or province that has the most internet orders is first, and then it descends from there. Now, here's why the duplicate column is important. Let's highlight those values. And under Pivot Table Tools and Options, show value as percent running total in. And we'll stick with state province. And what this has done is it's given you the percent running total uh, for the states and provinces. So California is 20.28% of the total. California plus British Columbia is 32.84% of the total. And this is what will give us that nice, smooth, exponential Pareto line that we all love to see in these statistical graphs. Internet order quantity 2 doesn't sound good, so let's change the name on that. Let's call it running percent total. Now, under values, Let's make this a Pareto chart. First, we'll change the running percent total to a line. Then, we'll move it to the secondary axis. Presto. There we have it, a Pareto chart. Let's look at the date here, which is currently in the background. Let's say we just wanted to look at the year 2006. As you can see, the values have cut down by over 50%, and we have slice and dice capabilities. 
Let's move back to all periods. Now we'll prepare the date so that it can be used as a parameter for a SharePoint filter. The filter will be designed at performance point and then it will be integrated into a SharePoint dashboard. So under formulas, define name, and it's very important that the cursor is set to B1 or to the actual box that has the drop-down capability. Define name, and let's call it Pareto date. Scope for the workbook is just fine. Now we'll save as, we'll keep it as Pareto, this way we have a copy of it on the C drive. Now let's share it. Publish to Excel Services. Move down here to Excel Services Options. And we'll move down to Items in the Workbook. All we really need on the dashboard is the Pareto chart itself. So we'll just select Chart 1. And then for Parameters, we can select Pareto Date, which we just created. Hit OK hit save and there you go we have a Excel Services 2010 Pareto chart that can be displayed on a SharePoint 2010 dashboard using the performance point dashboard builder